Hi students, welcome to lecture 43. Today I am going to discuss about the optimal lift coefficient versus the drag coefficient. So essentially this is an extension of our class before on the endurance and range of jet and propeller powered vehicles and we are going to look at the particular formulas and see where we should fly these aircraft in terms of the CL by CD, CL3 by 2 by CD and CL half by CD ratios. So today we are going to discuss these topics. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now let us just go through these four equations we derived in the previous four lectures. So these equations related to the propeller and the jet aircraft. For the propeller we derived range. We saw that range is a function of CL by CD and for the propeller endurance is a function of CL3 by 2 by CD. If we look at the jet aircraft, range is a function of CL half by CD and endurance is a function of CL by CD. So if you want to maximize any of these values of R or E, one of the strategies is that you can maximize the corresponding ratios of lift and drag coefficients. So let us look at these things one by one. Let us first look at the propeller aircraft which I have shown here. So in this kind of aircraft, the endurance is proportional to CL3 by 2 by CD. So I have highlighted this in red text here and the range is proportional to CL by CD. So we are going to look at these two cases for our maximization. And if we look at the jet aircraft, the expression for range is given by this. And here we can see that CL half by CD is the driving force for the range of a jet and CL by CD is the main thing we need to maximize for endurance maximization. So we are going to look at three things essentially which is CL by CD, then CL3 by 2 by CD and then CL half by CD and find the locations at which these become maximum. So we are going to need a little bit of calculus in today's lecture because we are going to differentiate a lot. And so do remember from your calculus that the derivative of any function of the form u by v is given by u dash v minus v dash u divided by v square. So here of course dash means the derivative. So for example, let me take a function such as sine x by x. So here sine x is u and x is v. So we are going to apply this formula here. So if I want to find f dash of x or df by dx, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the functions here and apply this formula. So u dash v would become that cos x into x. So essentially v was x, so it just came here and u got differentiated, u was sine x, so it becomes cos x, right? The next part we become negative and then we take the derivative of v so the derivative of x is 1 and then u just comes in there so sin x just comes in here and you divide this by x square because v is x so v square is x square so then we simplify this expression here and we get that f dash x is x cos x minus sin x divided by x square so this is how we apply these formulas related to functions of the form u by v. So this is going to be handy because now I'm going to try to maximize the function given by CL by CD and remember that CL by CD needs to be maximized in the case of propeller range maximization and jet endurance maximization. So this is the value for CD. This is basically the drag polar and so what I do is I take CL and I divide it by CD. So CL divided by the CD I have from the drag polar. So this gives me the expression for CL by CD. Now you can see this is in the form U by V. U is CL and V is this function in the denominator. It's a function of CL and the remaining things being constant. So now I apply the same formula here. If I want to find DCL by CD, by DCL. So essentially this is the V. So the V is the function below. It just gets squared. 
and here I write this function v when I differentiate Cl derivative of Cl is 1 so there is a 1 here and then I have a minus and then Cl comes right from here and then I take the derivative of the denominator so that gives me 2 Cl by pi e a r equal to this function and then this entire function has to be set to 0 because to remember that for the stationary point the derivative of the function is set to 0 so we set this to 0. Now when we set it to 0 we can only concentrate on the numerator part of this function so that's what I have written out here in red it's the numerator of this function here the function inside this yellow box. Now I put these aircraft here just to remind you that though we are doing all this calculus we are doing it for the sake of our propeller range and jet endurance maximization. So now I'm going to take this function and I'm going to try to simplify this. So I have just rewritten that function out here and you can immediately spot that here there is a CL square by pi e a r term and here there is a 2 CL square by pi e a r term. Now of course you remember that pi is of course pi 3.14159 E is the Oswald span efficiency factor, AR is the aspect ratio, and of course CL is the lift coefficient. So I can simplify this equation and I get CD0 equals CL square by pi EAR. That's the result of this equation in red getting simplified. Now, of course, I know that this right hand side is nothing but CDI or the induced drag. So essentially, the condition for propeller range maximization and jet endurance maximization is that CD0 equals CDI, a very interesting and simple result. So I can summarize it in the result here that CL by CD is max when CD0 equals CDI. Now let's look at the second condition, which is how to maximize propeller endurance. Now you know that many of the UAVs for example which are flying around nowadays they fly around with propellers and so endurance is often a thing we need to maximize there because we are flying for reconnaissance missions or surveillance missions in many of these cases so these aircraft need to be capable of loitering flight. So let's look at this CL3 by CD again I start with the CD here which is the drag polar and I take CL3 by 2 and I divide it by CD. So essentially I have taken CL3 by 2 and divided it by the drag polar. Now this becomes a function in the form U divided by V. So I again apply our formula here. So the derivative of CL3 by 2 by CD with respect to CL gives me this here. So the V part simply becomes square in the denominator. And here you have the V part here, come straight here. And then here you have the derivative of the U part or the numerator. So the derivative of this is 3 by 2 CL half. You have the minus here. You write the U back here. That is CL 3 by 2. And the next part is the derivative of this denominator term or V. That gives us 2 CL by pi E A R. Now this entire thing must be 0. So I can get rid of this denominator or forget about it and just set the numerator to be 0 which is what I have done here in this equation in red. So this is nothing but the numerator here set to 0. Now I'm going to try to simplify this expression in the next slide. So let me first simply write that expression out and then what I do is I extract 3Cl half by 2 from this entire equation. So, of course, on this part of the equation, the left-hand terms, the left-hand two terms, I simply get CD0 plus CL square by pi E A R. But on the right-hand side, what I do is that I can multiply this by 4 by 3. And essentially what happens is that the 4 and 2 cancel out and I have the 2 here and the 3 and 3 cancel out. And that's how I get the CL3 by 2 terms. So, CL 3 by 2 and CL gives me CL square and CL half. So it's the same CL 2.5 here as the CL 2.5 here. Okay, that means CL to the power 1.5 plus power 1 
is 2.5 and Cl to the power half and Cl square is also Cl to the power 2.5. So these are essentially the same equations, the equations in the green and the blue. And then what I do is I get rid of this term here because Cl is not equal to zero in that case. And then I get this term here in green, which I can simplify to this term here. <coughs> now do remember that this equation is totally for a propeller because we have been considering propeller endurance here. So that's why I have shown the propeller aircraft. And of course, you will immediately realize what this is, but we are going to discuss that in our next slide. So CD0 is this term, and we immediately know that this part is induced drag, that is CL squared by pi EAR is induced drag. So this is nothing but one third of CDI. So that's the condition at which the propeller endurance is maximized. CL3 by 2 by CD is max when CD0 is 1 by 3 CDI. Now the final thing which remains for us is maximization of CL half by CD, which is maximization of jet range. And again, I take CD, I write CL half by CD here, and I get this equation here. Then I differentiate this equation. And now the main thing to keep in mind is, of course, you get the denominator squared, you get the denominator here, you have to differentiate CL half. So CL half and differentiated becomes half CL to the power minus half. And here I have CL half here and the derivative of this denominator term V. After simplifying it, I get this here. This is nothing but the numerator set to zero because the derivative of CL half by CD is going to be zero at the stationary point. So this now gives us an equation which I have put in red, which we have to simplify further. So I have written this equation in red and then I have tried to simplify it here. So you can clearly see here that if I were to absorb this CL minus half by two term into this, essentially what I could do is I could multiply this complete equation by two and divide it by CL to the power minus half. So here there would be nothing left, but here I would get a two here and CL to the power half divided by CL to the power minus half would give me CL. So this is the equation I get. And then after some further simplification, I get the four here. And then what happens is I get CD zero is three CL square by pi EAR. Now, of course, you immediately know that this is three times the regular induced drag term CDI because CDI is CL square by pi EAR. So I can write CD0 is three times CDI. So that is the condition at which CL half by CD is max when CD0 is three times CDI. That's very important because the jet should fly in this situation to maximize range. And like I mentioned many times before, that's a very important problem because jet aircraft, passenger jet aircraft are often designed to fly for good values of range. So just to summarize what we got today from the application of calculus. So if any of you have been regretting taking calculus 101, today we applied that in the class here. So CL by CD is max when CD zero equals CDI. CL3 by 2 by CD is max when CD0 equals 1 third CDI and CL half by CD is max when CD0 equals 3 times CDI. So these nice formulas can be completely derived from calculus and they too tell you where exactly you should fly the aircraft so that your different values of range and endurance can be maximized. So now we have more or less completed the endurance and range sections of this course. You know how to calculate endurance and range. You also know how to maximize it. Next, we are going to start looking at takeoff and then we are going to look at landing. So these are the next two important parts of this course. <laughs>